Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to train a deep learning network to detect if a gear within a transmission is damaged or not. The neural network is going to be trained using comma separated value data from a, a CSV file uh, that can be created and edited uh, in Excel, which is very convenient and, and easy. Here's the data that we're going to use. The finite column is the one that we're going to used for the supervised training is an expected output and the, the rest of the columns are the input. Most of them are related to vibration and the final two are the condition of other parts. The, this video is based on this uh, article from the MALAB documentation which is included in the references of this video and as you can see, uh, most of the signals are related to vibration. Uh, vibration uh, is a very important factor uh, for a part to be damaged. And also the condition of the sensor and the shaft. And finally, the dust column is the one that provides the supervised learning uh, and indicates if the, that is going to be the output of the network, indicating if the tooth within the, the, the gear of the transmission is uh, at fault or not. Okay, so let's open this with going to open live script and that'll take us to MATLAB to the live script. So the first step is to uh, load the CSV file, which can also be open as a text. We can open as a text here. And also when we are in, in Excel, we can save it as a CSV file. So we can edit it as we prefer. And when we load it, uh, we're going to load it into a table object, which is a convenient object from MATLAB. And we are going to load the data as strings. And in here, we can see that the we have a table class. And the table class, uh, you can query in size, which we have 208 rows. Uh, samples and 21 columns, which which are the, the the input data plus the output. Okay, so first we have to do some pre-processing of the data before we feed it into a neural network. Uh, let's take a look uh, how the table looks. This head command, uh, if we display the table at is, as, as it is, uh, it's going to be a bunch of rows and it's pretty ugly. So we have this uh, head command uh, which displays some of the first rows. And in a presentable way, we can see the columns of it. The last column is the one for prediction again. And notice that uh, we're using strings. Although these are already as numerical uh, values. Yeah, so if he sees, uh, when he loads it, if he's, he sees that there is numbers, he's going to load uh, as numbers. But the text, text type, is going to be a string. But we don't want that for the neural network. First, uh, the neural network is going to uh, take numbers. It's going to prefer uh, inputs uh, for training. So we're going to do one zero, uh, one hot encoding uh, for these columns. And for the last column, uh, we can uh, the network can output a category. So we're going to make it categorical. And to make this categorical, we're going to use this read table, uh, no, sorry, the convert bars. Uh, we indicate uh, which column we want to transform, which is the last one here to this condition, and we're going to turn it into categorical. Okay, so let's do this, and let's see how it affects. Now we don't have strings anymore. We have a category. So let's do the same uh, for the next two, these two, sensor condition and shaft condition, these two categories. And we can pass the array in the same way that we did it here, here with convert bars. Instead of passing a single value, now we pass two. And we're also going to change them to categorical. So let's see how that improves the situation. OK, now we have the same. Uh, we don't have strings. But still, we want one hot encoding uh, for these two columns, which are input columns, to facilitate training of the network. And in order to do that, we use the one hot encode, which is going to take the data then, uh, so we're going to iterate through the both categories, one by one. Uh, first, we take the name of the category, and using the name, uh, notice that the table is a smart object. 
you can uh, put the name as the as an index and it's going to give you a, the, the right column so in here we're going to take all rows for the particular last column uh, i mean one of these columns at a time and then this is going to give us the values for example let's say that i is equal to one so let's take the first name sensor condition and then we take this it's going to give us a bunch of values and when we do one of the encoding it's going to split it so it's going to take all possible values of that particular column and it's going to do one hot encoding on that so if uh, this value is a sensor drift it's going to put one here and if it is no sensor drift it's going to put one in here and zero on the other okay so only one a uh, only one of the enums literals can have a a one okay so that's going to be done for both and for each of the columns let's get back to the head table Okay, so for, for each of the columns, it's going to insert that one hot, one hot encoding after the column and then remove this column by doing this. Okay, so let's do it. And let's see how the table looks. So the all columns are gone and now we have the one hot encoding, but this looks bad because they look uh, like subcolumns. We don't want them to be subcolumns. We want to be at the same level of the others. So for that we use split bars on the table and we get our table fixed. So let's take a look now. Perfect. Now this is ready for training. Now let's take the categories of the output, which is the last column. From the last column we take the categories and then that's just going to give us the two class name, which is no two fault and two fault. Okay, so we have the, the data ready for training but we have to split it into training validation and test test is gonna give us the final accuracy training is for the training and validation is gonna be applied a, a certain number of iterations a, to verify how good a, our training is generalizing this is gonna be our defense against a, overfeeding okay so we're gonna take 70 percent for for the training out of 208 that would be 145 uh, the number of observations is to 208 and so we take 15 percent uh, for validation which is 31 and the reminder 32 is going to be for testing so we're gonna uh, get the number of observation which is 208 and run permit Permutation is going to create random indexes for these 208 values. So let's do this. And this is just basically index. And you can see it like this. It's 208. And the maximum is 208. And the minimum is, is 1. So basically, it's like if you see it like this, it's going to be a random order. Because when you train the network, you want, don't want the original data to be in order. Because you can get biased. The, the network could be trained incorrectly. Okay, so now that we have the 140, we will not take the first 145 indexes for training. And then the next ones, starting from the last one until the next 31, are going to be for validation. And the reminder until the end are going to be for testing. Now that we have the indexes, we use that for the row dimension, the sample dimension which is the first time mentioned in the table. And we're going to pick up all the 23 columns. OK, so let's do this. And you might expect that the size of the table for training is going to be 145 by 10, 23. And the one for validation, whoa, the one for validation is going to be 31 by 23. And the other one is going to be 32 by 23 okay okay so we have the data ready and now uh, we're going to get the, the neural network the, the, the architecture of the network so the input are going to be the, the numerical inputs of the table so usually the neural networks uh, have as, as input images videos or text but in this case, we have 
numerical data. So they can be seen as features, and for that, there's the feature input layer. So we specify the number of features. The number of features is going to be 22 because we are picking up all the columns except the last one. Uh, we have 23 columns, so now we have a uh, 22 to subtract the last one. And the number of classes is the number of possible categories in the output. The output is going to be the prediction of the last column, which is uh, the year two is failed or not failed. So we have only two categories for this. Okay, so this is going to be used for the last layer. The classification, the fully connected layer at the end is going to provide us the classification. So we have to follow it by softmax layer and classification layer. The input is going to have 22 and a followed by a fully connected layer to increment from 22 to 50 features and then we apply batch normalization for regularization about overfitting a rectified linear unit a, which is going to be zero be, below if it is negative and linear if it is positive it's basically to avoid a, the vanishing gradient problem and introduces the non-linearity into a system because otherwise, if you don't have that, uh, this fully connected layer is going to have a bunch of asymmetric multiplication and then followed by the other is like you're not doing any training. So this non-linearity helps the neural network uh, to train better. Okay, so let's create it. It's, it's going to be an array of layers. Yeah, so you can see it as an array of seven layers. Okay, uh, now the training options are going to be relatively simple. We're going to use adaptive momentum for the training algorithm. The batch size is going to be 16. The batch is the number of samples that are going to be used before. Uh, for each 16 samples, we're going to actualize the change the weights in the neural network. We're going to update them. And then uh, we're going to provide the validation data to verify that we're generalizing well. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, so now we have the training options. We have the layers of the network architect architecture. And then we have the training data. Uh, usually, if you pass a data store, you have to provide the data store with the input data and the data store with the prediction data that is going to be used for the loss function to do gradient descent and train the network. Uh, but now uh, this is different now because the the expected output is going to be within the table and the train network knows about it. So you specify the column containing the label that is going to be used for the supervised learning, the expected output, and which is the last column. And so you provide the name and it's going to pull it from there. And he knows that the rest of the data is going to be for the inputs. Okay, so we only have 200 and eight samples and we have a relatively small network so this should train very fast so let's see how this is doing okay so it's using the gpu by default MATLAB uses it you, you don't have to do anything to set it up so that makes the training way faster uh, okay so we can see that the validation is very close to the uh, to the training training uh, accuracy. Okay, so it's not doing overfitting, so it's doing well with a pretty high. Actually, uh, the validation uh, accuracy last time that I run it, it was ninety seven percent. So okay, so let's try it uh, with the test data to see how well it's performing. So we're going to use the classify method, which is the method that does the actual prediction on the train network. Net is the train network. So classify is a, really a method of the train network. So let's use it as a method rather than pass it the network as an input. Now this is more clear. So we're using the classify method. So given the input data from the test, which is all the columns except the last one, and we're going to use the same mini batch size, which is uh, 16. So we're gonna predict the output. We're gonna get we're gonna use the network to predict the, the output of the if the if the gear of the transmission is damaged or not. And we can see here some of them are damaged, some of them are not. Okay, so now uh, we have some expected values which is in the test data. We get the last column, 
all the rows from the last column and we can see here that the data is similar and now let's compare it let's compare one with the other uh, just let's do it manually just by running this and you can see all of them are one except oh, so basically it's only mismatching in only one value so you can expect that the accuracy is very high 97 percent okay so let's take a look at the confusion chart so we can see that it failed only once and predicted the tooth failure correctly in all others so we showed that uh, with a very small network and small amount of data uh, we were able to to train this in and it did not overfit so also we did it with an excel is a separated value file which can be manipulated in excel which is pretty easy and convenient thank you very much for your attention